Now, good afternoon, my name is Paul Falcone and I am uh, here today to uh, demonstrate a revolutionary floating dock system because I am in need of some development capital to take it from prototype to production. Today is October the 26th, 2010. What you have behind here is the prototype. It is utilizing what is known as the whaler system of connection, which is typically reserved for concrete floating docks. These pieces of lumber are what carry the load. There is a steel rod that travels all the way through. You can see the, the PVC pipe that is encasing that. The only reason for the PVC is to make it easy for assembling a prototype. I had to pre-drill these parts, which are the key to the system. All floating dock systems require some type of an infrastructure to carry the load. How you connect them together, there's all different varieties of that. What we have is a very rugged system of connection, but with lightweight plastic parts. You can continue to lengthen these docks by bringing this whaler halfway to the next section. You have two four by eight frameworks on top of a four, excuse me, two four by four frameworks on top of a four by eight flotation unit. So you can carry this whaler and have it stop halfway between the next section. Same thing with the inside whaler over here and the same thing with this inside whaler. So you can get a, a crude form of lamination, kind of a butcher block and you can continue to add these parts together. The key to the system is this part. This is what is known as a structural foam mold injection part where you get a very thick wall thickness. We're looking at about three quarters of an inch of material here. These particular parts have a vertical loading capacity of 30,000 pounds. What I need to do is make my own part. So we have some lateral loading because as you can see, there's nuts on the ends of either end that bring that threaded rod all together and laminate all the parts together. We don't have any box beaming in here or here, and there's a rod that travels through each one of the decks. There's three on each one. So a box beam needs to be incorporated. These rods also need to be registered on one foot center, so you have a rod every foot in these deck sections. Because what you would do in order to produce a finger pier, you would take just a four by eight section and you can turn it and bring it off perpendicular to the rest of the dock and now you have a finger here. And it's attached by what they're traditionally known as knee braces or a steel brace that utilizes the through rods to bolt it together. A gentleman by the name of Bruce Tobiason is an engineer that did an analysis of this system. Um, it's available on the web. I can uh, email it to anybody that needs to uh, take a look at it. He uh, wrote the Army Corps book um, of engineers for Small Craft Harbors and Marinas. As a matter of fact, the book is called Small Craft Harbors and Marinas by Bruce Tobias. He understands the value of the whaler system of connection, which is what he bases his engineering analysis on. But the advantage of this system over the other systems that utilize the whaler system of connection is you have a, a quickly produced, very inexpensive, but structurally sound framework by which you can connect them together. <coughs> Four minutes of cycle time. The mold that produces these parts, which is a four by four, I don't know if you can see that there's a, a separation here, but the mold that produces this part produces it in four minutes, and it's costing about $100. We're looking at about a $6 a square foot part cost. All other floating dock systems that exist that have a framework are either made out of wood, aluminum, steel, or concrete, and uh, only a select few use the whaler system of connection. The, uh, the frameworks that they have to produce out of wood, aluminum, steel, or concrete are very labor intensive. All the labor is gone. You cannot give an employee 16 square feet, which is this section here, of wood, aluminum, concrete, or steel, and say, you know what, here's $100, go buy the materials that you need, put it together in four minutes, it just can't be done. So we have a very rugged system of connection, plus a quickly produced part that is only just a slave to hold that rod so that you can connect them all together. That lends into the ability to distribute the product. We have a lightweight plastic part. We can get 7,000 square feet of these parts in one cargo container on one flatbed truck and ship them anywhere in the world. So your distribution costs are a lot less. And then once they get there, I'll walk over and grab one of them. They're easily assembled. This section through bolts to the bottom of a flotation device that's totally encapsulated. This section over here bolts it the same way. Put all 
Got two of them on one flotation device, two over there, both them together. Run the rods through with the whalers and you're done. All done by hand. So when it gets to Indonesia or to Brazil or to uh, Oklahoma or California, a novice crew put the thing together. It's very simplistic. We're gonna have these parts keyed together with the flotation device so you don't have to have any kind of specialized crew to do any of that. The uh, advantage of uh, the system being able to do that is that you don't have any overhead. The installation costs are a lot less. Most uh, floating dock companies have specialized crew, specialized equipment. Everything's done by hand. You don't need cranes. You don't need uh, any kind of forklifts. One of the other competitive advantages that we have here is that the uh, product itself can be cosmetically upgraded or structurally upgraded. As you can see, we got uh, pressure treated lumber, which is obviously the least expensive form of uh, lumber you can get, but uh, on the market now are uh, structural uh, lumber, schedules of lumber that um, contain fiber reinforcing, so if you wanted to replace these with these, you can also deck right over the top of it. You can walk on the surface if you want to, um, or you can just deck over the top of it. There's oodles and oodles of uh, decking materials that are 100% um, recycled plastic or recyclable, so you can make this a a completely 100% recyclable product. Some of the parts actually can be from recycled materials. The, uh, the second competitive advantage that we will see here is that not only can you structurally upgrade it, but you can cosmetically upgrade it. You can actually send these parts to a small contractor anywhere in the world, and he can put it together himself without having to have any specialized equipment once again. But he can also offer to that end user those upgrades if, if need be, or he can sell it just the way that it is at a very inexpensive cost. So that small contractor anywhere in the world is now a marketing tool for the product. You no longer have to have a facility. All you need is a small uh, sales force so you can drop ship these parts anywhere in the world and that small contractor can put it together. So he can now bid on a much bigger job than he was capable of bidding on before. As it stands right now, the uh, floating dock companies that exist are um, offered jobs through a bidding process for municipalities or private owners. And uh, they bid on the job, they get the job, they small, find that small contractor and help them do the installations there or they go there with their own specialized crew. As it stands, you can have that contractor be your marketing tool. He can sell the product on a residential level because he can warehouse these parts in his yard or he can um, have thousands of them run off if he gets a big municipal job or a big development. Uh, anywhere in the world. So you've got a competitive advantage there. <clears throat> you also have a cost advantage over all the other systems. What we're looking at with these parts that were readily available to me, these are actually plastic pallets that were um, produced for obviously a different uh, reason. They have a vertical loading capacity, which gets back to the uh, development capital that I need is to steal some of that vertical loading capacity and create some lateral loading designing the features where the connections are on the points, put those rods back on one foot centers, and uh, a few other little things that are a few little secrets I'll keep. So the uh, financial competitive advantage, what you're looking at um, with these parts is about $19 a square foot. We are um, considerably less expensive than just about every other dock system on the market, but we are combining a very lightweight, structurally sound part with the most rugged connection system that exists. Uh, at $19 a square foot, most of the uh, concrete manufacturers are coming in about $53 a square foot for their parts costs. The uh, less expensive, less sound, structurally sound systems are coming in from $20 to $25 to $35 a square foot. So depending on what the end user's needs are, we have, um, again, the most rugged construction method, but we can structurally upgrade it and downgrade it. There are 12,000 marinas, roughly 12,000 marinas in the United States. The average size of this marina is, is about uh, 21,000 square feet. By my calculations in relation to the development capital that we need, uh, we need one job of 25,000 square feet in order to pay back the cost of the molding. What I need is a specialized mold to produce a framework like this associated with the paid act with just one job of 25,000 square feet. Okay, um, like I mentioned before, these parts are made um, by a process which is known as structural foam mold injection. The advantage of this um, injection process is that you get an increased wall thickness as opposed to some of the other types of uh, plastic injection. So you're able to build in a lot of structural integrity where you need it, 
and if you donate it, so you can lean the part out to save costs on it as far as uh, as far as your final part cost. But getting back to the box beaming, where you can create that that structural uh, lateral loading capabilities of it, and then the uh, attachment points need to be uh, reinforced in that. The structural foam injection for that this part is uh, very well suited for structural foam. Well, that concludes my demonstration of the uh, the prototype that I have here in front of me. Uh, my name is Paul Falcone, F-A-L-C-O-N-E, once again, and I can be reached at 727-215-2320. I also have an uh, address of P. Falcone, that's F-A-L-C-O-N-E, the number 2, at Tampa Bay, T-A-M-P-A-B-A-Y dot R-R dot com.